Hello and welcome back to the shop. This week I make two steel stools. This is my paper model. If you follow me on Patreon, you would see this go from a sketch in my notebook to this little paper model to where we are today. I typically start with a small scale model of something if I need to understand it better. And in this case, the reason why I wanted to understand it better was because I wanted to figure out what the shape of this pattern would look like in flat. A couple of reasons for doing this week's video is I need furniture for my new leather studio, which you'll see by the end of the video. And I also want some experience with my bending break in conjunction with my plasma cutter. Plasma cut, bend, assemble, you have a chair. And that's what this video is all about. First step, I gotta jump into Illustrator and make all my vectors that are gonna become this chair. Enjoy. Okay, here we are in Illustrator, and I'm gonna show you how I made the patterns that you see there on the right. I start with the overall size of the actual side of the stool that I have in mind, the little paper pattern I made. I put an 18 by 30 square underneath a 12 by 30 square. So the 12 represents the width of the top, the 18 represents the width of the bottom. Now the inner square is going to start to make up the profile of what the legs look like, the tapered legs. One and a half inches at the bottom, I just use a reference block. It's just for size reference only. That's three now, the bottom was one and a half. I bring the tapers over with the point selection tool. So now where I had the 12 by 30 square on top of the 18 by 30 square, now I have two trapezoids. I use the big trapezoid as the bottom, the little one, to cut through that. And that's how I end up with the left and right legs. And now I'm adding the little piece that's going to be the flare over, where just to give it a little style, pull out that fillet. And now I don't necessarily need the other one, but I need two of these, because this is going to be the corner. Each one of these legs makes up the corner of the stool. And now I bring them close together, parallel, back to back. I throw a strip over it to connect them. You see it's three of them, now I connect them all, join them completely, and now I have one compound path times four becomes the four legs, and now I make the top, and the top is 12 by 12 with 12 by 3 inch flaps that bend down, and then the hand hole in the middle, and there I have my basic structure. I'll make the rungs, the rungs are just simple rectangles, and there you go, and that's how I got there. And my final palette is exactly 48 inches by 48 inches, so I know exactly where all the parts are going to land on the material. If you're looking to pick up some cool tools for the shop while they're still in stock, you can click the link in the description below and get the Duresta Skeleton Knife made from 420 stainless steel, the Duresta Razor Blade, which scores a 55 on the Rockwell meter for hardness, and of course, the tool of all tools, my handmade ice pick. Inventory does sell out quickly, so make sure you click the link in the description below to get this bundle now. And of course, thank you for the love and support always. Right now I am in the TorchMate software, it's CAD CAM. In here is my Illustrator file. I plug it in, I come over to here, file, import, steel stools, that's the file. And it asked me where to place it. From my Illustrator file, there were some colors that I indicated on it for no good reason other than just to separate them from other parts of the, they don't mean anything. So once this file, all these vectors are in here selected, I go up here in machine, apply a tool path, a male tool path. I'm default to 100 inches a minute. Hit OK. And now I can go up here, view only, show tool paths only, and there's my tool paths. And you can see here up close, that's going to be the entrance for every cut. There you can see the inside cut. I select it all. And then I go up here to the scissors and I say cut. And now it's going to make my cut path. I'm going to save it onto the hard drive. I'll save it onto the thumb drive here and then I'll bring that over to the machine. Steel stools, I'm saving it on the Kingston thumb drive. And there it is. I take this, I bring it over to the computer and we bring it up on the cut over there. First, I got to load up the material. Materials on the table. I turned on the cutter. This is the FlexCut 80. This is the machine that actually does the cutting. The hose comes out of the machine. It goes up here, and the cutting torch is attached to that. So the very end of that, this is the power plant which causes the cut. There's air connected to it. it goes through a filter right here. There's the air tank. You need constant pressure. Plug the thumb drive in. Select job, 
grounds, steel stools, there's the job, open up, and there's the job. It's the whole table. It's going to cut the whole piece. Believe it or not, I'm still amazed how this thing works. Every time I cut, I still have to watch every single cut that takes place. I'm also looking for anything that might go wrong. If this machine jams up, I want to be there to, to stop it. But it's usually pretty good. All right, so two of the legs on the shorter stool didn't make it into the cut. I must not have been paying attention and they didn't get added to the cut path. So before I moved all the negative, I'm using this as my location area. I cut out some scrap. For instance, I cut this scrap out right here. I lay this right on top of that. It should fit in there somehow. Just, it just fits, just like that. So now I just have to start my cut on the graphics. Go right here. Move to here. And it's going right to there on the cut path, which is basically right here. Run from torch position, select the file. So it's gonna go to there, it's gonna go to the beginning of the cut, which is the pig ear there. Good job. And I also adjusted the Z height to come up a little bit. I hit stop, reset. And there's my other leg. You could start the cut anywhere on there. You just zoom in and choose it. And then you say cut from there. Now we'll clean this up, get it dried up and start prepping it to bend. When you plasma cut, there's always a little bit of what's called dross on the back. It's, it's like a little residue from the cut and I'm sanding that all off. Okay, I'm over at the other shop now because I need to use the bending brake and some metal tools I don't have over there. I'm going to try a bead roller. I'm going to run a bead right on that line. It's going to strengthen the seat pan. And I'm going to get more experience using the bead roller. Let's see how I do. Okay, this is a bead roll that I got from Eastwood many, many years ago. I did some experimentation off camera and I think I got the hang of it. We'll give it a try. Making the turns is gonna be the hard part. I'll start in the middle here. Maybe we get lucky and we can come back up to it. All right, it goes in these dies. I tighten it up. And now it is crushing a little offset right there. There's a crank on this side. Slow and steady. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm making two metal stools. This is the seat pan for the smaller one, nine by nine inches. That's it. Maybe that's okay. Not perfect, but not bad. Second time I've ever done this in my life. Now this is the larger seat. This is a full 12 by 12 inches. I'm going to get a little daring. That last one came out okay. I'm going to try and do the outside edge on this big seat and the inside handle. So it's going to be bumped up both directions. Let's see what that, that gives me. I go around the line twice, just experimenting. I want to see if I can get it a little bit deeper, so I go around one time, and then I give it a crank on the bolt, and I go around a second time. 
The only way to get good at something like this is just to experiment. I certainly don't want to screw it up, but I don't know what the hell I'm doing to begin with, so how can I be so confident? The hardest part is staying right on that line. Like I said, I, I run the risk of screwing this whole thing up, but I got more metal and I got more time. Figure it out. One, two. It's important to move everything at the same time because I know from the bandsaw, if it's not all sweeping at the same time, it's going to be it's not going to look as smooth as it should. Ugh, there's a lot happening in here. Not perfect, not bad. Pretty damn good. And we'll bend this on the bender. That's coming up next. Okay, I'm here at the break. This is a big giant break. It's under a cover next to my shop. Rain's falling all around me. But I've been wanting to play with this machine. I bought this several years ago. It's a, a bending break. I could bend up to eight feet long, eighth inch. Runs on three phase 220, which is running in the other room. There's a button right here that'll go up to 90 degrees. Here we go. That's pretty rough. It's not quite as sharp as I expected, but I never did use this machine until this very moment. But having some soft edges can't be the worst for a piece of furniture. I had to take a minute to take out a couple of these chunks so that I could bend between them. Okay, this is a box break, which means you could make boxes. Literally, that's what the top of the seat ultimately will be a box. You could take out some of the teeth so that these edges could fold past that. That's what we're gonna do right now. Not bad. This is the smaller pan. We're gonna take out this tooth. Now this is our seat pan for our little seat. 18 gauge. It just gets stronger and stronger as you bend it. This is one of the foot rests. I'm going to show you what I did here. Put the bead on it, then I bent it on the machine. It is now the next day. It's not raining anymore. <sighs> it's got that curve in it, but when I bend it, it'll straighten out. Let me do the other two, and then we'll go bend them at the bender. To run this machine, it's three phase. I have to run it off of this American Rotary amp unit. It converts 220, 50 amps into three phase. And this is the plug for the bending brake. The wire goes through here, comes to here. And this is the bending brake. I'll just show you a little quickie about what happens here. Right here. And there's a stopper. You see that? We'll stop at the right angle. You set it up.
And you could adjust that so it'll bend obtuse or not. very sturdy. This is 18 gauge and this is much stronger than I expected it to be. When I designed these cuts in Illustrator, I put the little nicks on them so I know where the center is. I got this tool pieced together a little bit. I might throw welding tacks in the background because for me to start drilling and riveting, that's the plan is to put rivets here. For me to start fiddling about, I'm gonna loosen every one of the clamps. So if I could just tack it together and then I could manhandle it a little bit. When I first pictured assembling this, I assumed I was going to do it part by part, rivet by rivet. Welding it together is the much easier option, but I need to be careful not to burn through. This is the little stool, of course. I welded it off camera, and this is the big one. You could see the penetration on the welds. This is where the rivets are going to go in each one of these spots. I'm also going to rivet the foot rails. These are the rivets. I got them at Tractor Supply. I'm going to have to drill the holes and then heat and beat them from the back. Okay, off camera. I taught myself how to rivet. Not the most elegant process. I take one rivet. I put the rivet in the hole and I lay it down on this chunk of steel, which I'm using as sort of an anvil. I'm using my Harris torch, oxyacetylene. I'm trying to get the smallest, shortest flame that I can. I do not want to heat up the sheet metal and then I mush it. That's how we do it. The rivet itself is not getting flattened, just a little bit of a dimple. I could put a, a cup behind it, but I'm not that ambitious at the moment. I do the rest of the rivets the very same way, trying not to heat up the sheet metal too much, and it worked out perfect. The hardest part is keeping the rivets in place when I place them and then flip it over. Now that I just went to school on the large stool, I tackle the small stool and I get it all done in about 15 minutes. Just surveying my work up till now, this was quite a bit of work to get all those rivets done. Now I make the decision to make some gussets. I go back to Illustrator and I draw some gussets. I bring them back to the plasma cutter. And here you could see some beautifully curved gussets. This way I could actually ultimately make the stool stack if I wanted to make more of each style. Plasma cutter is like having magic at your fingertips. There they are. And then I pre-drill all the rivet holes because this is an eighth inch steel. A combination of the 8th inch steel with the 18 gauge is a real nice look. It'll give it that real industrial look that I was talking about earlier. And I weld them in from the back. And then once all the gussets are welded in, and believe me, it added a tremendous amount of lateral strength to that. 
that whole foot rail is extremely strong now and it there's, there's no deflection you could deflect it if you're trying to but it's not happening and then I'm putting the rivets in place and then I'm just throwing a little bead of weld underneath each one to keep them in place I didn't feel it necessary to heat and beat those it would have been a little too clumsy I left it just up to the welder and that worked out great now introducing my tractor supply sandblaster I'm throwing some media in there. The finest media I could find, it's actually left over from the Wazer. It's that stuff that you would use, the abrasive. I threw that in there. It gave me a nice fine finish on the steel. I got rid of all the burn marks. And I tried doing a scotch Bright finish on there. I didn't like it. It was hard to get it consistent. So the sandblast really worked out nice. It gave it a nice even tone. This is the smaller stool. I'll tell you what, this sandblaster is the biggest pain in the ass tool I ever worked with in my life. And of course I'm wearing a mask and full body gear. Now here they are. They have a real beautiful finish. I was all prepared to paint them clear, but I'm gonna leave them. I wanna let them get patinaed and if they decide that they wanna get rusty, I'll just sandblast them again with a new, better quality sandblaster. And they, I really like the look of that eighth inch steel riveted to the sheet metal there, right there. That really came out nice. I was able to get all the, uh, all the, the, the black off of those bigger pieces. Now here I'm just checking out my, my sturdiness. It's my dirty boots. I'm able to stand on everything. It, it, I totally trust it. There's no, there's no wiggle in there at all. And now here they are in the setting they're going to live in. These are stools for my new leather studio. I really want this room to be bespoke. This is the first piece of furniture. And also the rocking chair from January is in there at the moment. You can see it there. Really, really, really happy with this work. And uh, I might make some more. Who knows? We'll see where it goes.